Hi, and good morning. It's Jim from Avstar Observatory. A little bit strange feeling uh, towards the beginning of this new year. Um, I've had a few ideas going through my head uh, as to how to approach the whole year and, you know, a few plans that I want to get um, achieved early on in the year. Uh, if you've been following the videos, you know a couple of those are uh, getting magnetometers and muon detectors out into the field in Brazil and Russia not being very easy for us in 2020 let's hope we have more success in 2021 um, some of the things that I've been thinking about and I should just say before we begin uh, I suppose on these uh, ideas I've had is big thanks to those that have been supporting the observatory last year and we just hope that we continue uh, this year to get some support. And uh, big thanks to those over the last few days that have, um, you know, chipped in a little bit of funding for us. So I've, I've written down a few words. Um, we're going to talk at the end of this video about the Janabekov effect, which is that plasticine ball that was rotated on the space station that had a, a nut attached to it to off balance one end I'm going to talk about that and a couple of other words I've written down in front of me is um, perspective success and relativity I think these are the main things of which I've been thinking about you know okay so I'll just give you an idea of um, where I'm coming from so you're positioned on a hilltop somewhere watching a train go past in the distance and it's really far away and you can put your thing, little finger up and compare the size of what you see in the distance this huge train which you know it's huge if you're standing at the um you know at the station as the train goes past you you know how big the trains are and the noise they make and everything but now we're looking at it in the distance and it's quiet, you can't hear it, and it looks teeny weeny, you know, like a like a, a worm going across the countryside. Very small. And I think <clears throat> that is um you know, something that Albert Einstein was talking about, relativity. You know, things are only relative to you uh according to the position that you're in to view them. I hope. That's what he was talking about when he was talking about relativity. We know when he was talking about rel relativity, he was talking about lots of things, wasn't he? Like quantum physics and stuff like that. And we get into this crazy world of quantum physics where, you know, if you put a cat in a box, close the box. Apparently, if you can't hear the cat moving around in the box, it's no longer there until you open it. Then it's there. So... You know, this is just a few of the, the ideas that I've had rattling around in my head. And, and another one is uh, successfulness. I think you can only measure success on an individual basis. You know, one person's success compared to another would be completely different. Let, let me just um, talk about that for a little bit. Let's say you're 12 years old and you've got leukemia and you're dying. And... You know, you feel that you've not been very successful because you never made it to 60 years old. You see, everybody's uh, level of success is on different uh, levels. Some people, uh, a lot of people, as you know, uh, claim success as being very rich and wealthy and having a lot of money to do different things in life. But, you know, life is still a life. You can get to 60 years old and have no money in your pocket, but you've been very successful to get to 60 years old. You know, I suppose I suppose another word here to throw into the mix is um, humbleness, you know, being grateful for what you've had. So, you know, I think the three words that I've had uh, going round in my head the last week or so all have something to play in each other. So relativity, uh, successfulness and perspective all have 
a part to play in each other <coughs> for various reasons. So where does the Jenna Beckoff effect come into it? Okay, so I suppose I should start really by showing you what the Jenna Beckoff effect is so you get a bit of an idea, so well, let's do that. So I'm about to start the video so you can see what the Jenna Beckoff effect is. This was done on the International Space Station in zero gravity. Or you could argue artificial zero gravity because they're not really uh, that far away from the surface of the Earth in order to uh, experience real zero gravity like you would if you was the same distance away from the moon but not by the moon's gravity. Um, what this is, is they're experiencing gravity because they're in a con continuous fall which is uh, limited by speed so that you get zero gravity effect. So this is what happens in zero gravity when you get a plasticine ball and you attach a weight of uh, metal like they did in this case, a nut, and pressed it into the back of the plasticine and it produced the Janabekov effect. This is it. So we're watching this ball rotate a few uh, times and then flip over. I'll try and get back that uh, same clip so we can see. Um, let me fast forward it. There we go. And my question here is, you know, if we compared the Earth, which is in zero gravity, you know, the Earth is rotating around the sun, and it is, um, you know, doing ro a rotation in 24 hours at 1,000 miles an hour, what would happen if the ice caps built up over one hemisphere more than the other? Would we get the Jenebekov effect? Well, I suppose that just depends on how much weight of ice was placed on the northern hemisphere but one thing that surprised me about this is the lack of information um, this was something that uh, Janabekov the Russian astronaut discovered when he undone one of the nuts that held a control panel to the um, wall of the space station <coughs> but Nevertheless, it was uh, classified instantly for 10 years, kept secret. And I'm just wondering whether they had actually done more experiments to the tune of how little a weight would you have to place on the ball for it to actually flip. Because we could model easily how much would be the critical point of Earth building up an ice belt over one of its hemispheres that would imbalance in terms of mass uh, the rest of the world to create the Janabekov effect and you know I think it's important uh, because of something that was mentioned in the Bible and I'll get to that right now well I was going to show you the actual part in the Bible where it said, you know, the sun will rise uh, in the west and not like it does for most of us today in the east. Um, you could find it if you wanted to. Um, I'm just, I'm mentioning it. Well, the point is, is that if we was to experience the Jenebekov effect through an ice cap building up over one hemisphere more than the other, imbalancing the earth, the Jenebekov effect would actually happen and in turn you know uh, it would rotate uh, for a while which would allow us to see the Sun coming up in the east and then flip and from that point on the Sun would come up in the west and if that happened I'm sure most of you know about the super bulge at the equatorial region where all our waters are, our oceans, would swirl all over the lands, creating a devastating flooded effect. 
And the thing is, if you look in the history of our Earth, if you study paleontology, you'll see uh, from looking especially at satellite maps, it does appear to have happened. Um, something has caused massive mudslides that have scarred millions of hectares of land uh, all over this world. Again, I, I was talking about this um, in a recent video about you know, the extinction of the dinosaurs. The, that same thing could cause the extinction of the dinosaurs. It's just a matter of how much weight tips the balance before such a thing happens. And we go about our daily lives, you know, not even most of us knowing about the Jenebekoff effect. And, the you know, we have to uh, now think about this because the Russians classified it. And I bet you they classified it because they did further measurements to know what was the critical point that sets up the Jenebekoff effect. How much weight is just a bit too much and then the effect takes place we you know with that you could scale it down to the earth very easily or scale it up to the earth very easily so you know the mass in general of the earth and then you know the mass which is the critical point at which sets up the Genebekov effect which would need to be on one of the hemispheres of our planet we do go into glacial and interglacial periods but are they severe enough to set up the Genebekov effect? You know, we're talking about masses of kilometres of ice that builds up and therefore masses of metric tonnes that build up on our hemispheres as we go into winter. But when we go into glacial periods, these are there for prolonged times. So one thing would be to look out for if we was concerned about the Genebekov effect, you know, spinning us on our rotational axis upside down would be, you know, a beginning of a glacial period. And here's the thing. We are approaching a glacial period. For 12,000 years we've you know, experienced the ending of the glacial period and we are moving towards a, a glacial period again at this point in time in our lives as well as everything else. You know, the climate on our Earth has been changing for the last 30 years noticeably. Uh, we're going through a magnetic reversal which is, again something that happened 12,000 years ago and it does look possible that's that's the thing I'm not sure why um, you know I've been not not meditating over it I suppose I've been thinking about these these three things you know relativity successfulness and perspective for a reason you know looking into this new year there's there's things that we want to do at the observatory you know like um, getting our magnetometers out to Brazil and Russia um, the magnetometers are already built I'm in the process of finishing off a muon detector and you know I can put another one of those together as well send out as a package we've got for Brazil you know a battery backup system which will last probably about four hours keeping the equipment running should there be a power cut which is common in that country but um, you know we're pretty much ready to go here we just need the location and some willing superstars like we've already got around the world and we can get that information back I don't know, I don't know what to say, really. 2021, we're here already. And the clock is ticking. We're approaching 40 degrees with uh, respect to the 
you know, migration of the magnetic north pole, we will reach a total of movement of 40 degrees across the northern hemisphere in around about two and a half years. At that point, I believe we'll be entering the weak field lines, leaving the strong field lines, and we should get, you know, this spectacular event begin to take place. I'm just surprised that at this point in time, you know, the world's organisations on these events aren't, you know, informing everybody around the world about this. Maybe they're going to wait to the last minute and then they're going to make the spectacular announcement to the world so that everybody knows in this world what it is we're actually heading into and you know when we're talking about successfulness for those people that think successfulness is about having you know lots of zeros in their bank account at that point in time it's going to be irrelevant uh, I think that, that that is what the message is about you know that's why I've probably been thinking about this for the last week or so you know these three words relativity successfulness perspective is about you know trying to put it in a way where people can you know get to grips of what possibly is about to happen on our world and I suppose people need to think about these things perspective what is successfulness and you know how does that that fit in your life how is it relative to you I suppose that's the thing some of the things that we talk about here at the observatory are relevant to all of us and I think that you know None of my life has been wasted over the last 10 years of, you know, putting myself through that pain of learning programming. And it's worse than learning a language because, you know, if you're communicating with somebody, at least if you make a little slight mistake in the pronunciation of that language, it's still understood what you were saying. But with programming, it's not. You get one full stop or one colon or, you know, forward slash in the wrong place, the program simply doesn't work, despite there being a thousand lines of code correct. You make that one mistake, it doesn't work. And that was painful to uh, actually l teach myself that. But we got there, you know, we've got some good equipment, uh, we've got some good electronics that do uh, those tedious tasks of measuring, you know, every three seconds, um, the magnetic position of the North Pole and, you know, the tedious task of every 15 minutes measuring the strength of the magnetic field around one of our magnetometers that we've got around now, the world in the field. So, maybe the whole point of this video was to just, you know, allow you guys to put in perspective uh, you know, some of the things that I've been thinking about because we're in the new year now. We know that we're getting close to a, a point in time in the future. One year closer to that point in time in the future where things are going to start becoming more relative to us and relative to people that are completely unaware of what's going on. So maybe, you know, this is an opportunity for us to do something about that. Yeah, we could equally say that we are standing on the track. In the distance, we see the train arriving. We know if we stand on the track, we'll get hit by that train and we have the opportunity to move aside to it. Maybe that moving to the side of it for you guys is preparing a little bit for the event whichever it could be. I'm 
I'm going to leave you here with them forwards guys and I will mention the link down there if you want to help support what we do at the observatory you know we are slowly gearing up for a very busy year here at the observatory and it would be great if a few people would support us in our efforts here that's all I'm going to say and other than that you know have a great day as always bye for now